Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing a big sample haul. So I will probably have a part two to this because I'm currently visiting family, but I'm going to be back home and I have some packages being delivered to my apartment. So there will be a part two. But the theme of this video is finding my perfect niche vanilla fragrance. So I am looking for something linear. I don't want there to be fruit in there. I don't want there to be a harsh patchouli in there. I just want it to be very simple, like vanilla, caramel, tonka bean, something like that. You know what I mean? Benzoin, musk, whatever the case is. Um, so before you comment a suggestion, please watch the whole video or check the description box because I did try a lot of niche vanillas in this video. And I got a lot of helpful recommendations on Facebook in the Saved by the Smell Facebook group, which I highly recommend you guys join. Um, it was started by Erin, who is also known as Decadent Deconta Deconta on Instagram and TikTok. And she is actually, you know, a part of this video in a sense because I ordered these first three decants from her. So yeah, um, in the Facebook group, kind of got ahead of myself. I listed out all the vanillas that I've tried, told everyone what I was looking for and asked for suggestions. A lot of people had the most amazing suggestions. So... Yes, if you have any other suggestions that I didn't mention in this video or anything, let me know. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So the first one that I wanted to try was Maison Mataha's Escapade Gourmand because Fumi Monet loves this. She's on TikTok and also Instagram. And I love her recommendations, love her page, everything like that. And this is kind of hard to find a sample of. I think it's out of stock everywhere. Like even the bottle, it's kind of hard to find. You can only buy it from like their site and the scent room online and in person. So again, I don't know if Erin is still send sending, selling decants of these bottles, but you could always ask. Um, however, you guys, I hate to say it because I hate to say the opposite of anything Fumi says, but this is not worth it to me. It's quite expensive. It's in a stunning bottle. I feel like I should love this. And let me just preface this by saying everybody loves Eilish. I don't love Eilish. So I think maybe this could be something that everyone would love and I would be the odd man out, which wouldn't be unusual because a lot of people love Lieb and I don't love Lieb. A lot of people love LaBelle. I do not like LaBelle. So I think there's just a note in here that I don't jive with. In the beginning, to me, it smells like a cheap coconut vanilla. And I'm not saying that in the sense that like everything cheap is bad, not at all, because affordable things can be amazing. Bath & Body Works has the best body mist, some of the best body mist. This smells like nothing special. This smells like something I could get at Bath & Body Works or even uh, Body Ecology could do better than this. I swear, I swear. Also, this, performs like a body mist. It has no sillage, no projection. I don't think this would last well on anyone at all. This would be a good like cozy night in, bedtime fragrance for sure. It's not gonna give you a headache. Um, if you're a nurse, this would be so inoffensive, whatever. It has brown sugar, benzoin, I think vanilla. <sighs> you guys, I don't know, I was so disappointed by this because I had really high expectations, but unfortunately it's just not good enough for me okay next is by the house of profumo de Firenze. and again erin is amazing she has such an amazing collection i also got my glaze ecstasy decant from her which is an italian exclusive from simone andrioli and this is also an italian exclusive well it's not exclusive to one retailer but it is harder to get your hands on, right? So she has a bottle of it and I was like, great, because you know, she lives in the US, it's not a problem. This has the most interesting notes. It has banana, first of all, and cookie and raspberry and a couple other notes too. So it's supposed to be a fruity gourmand, fruity cookie type of thing. And every time I smell this, I cannot help but think this is the same thing. Well, okay, my glazed ecstasy sample is back at home in my apartment, so I will do a side-by-side -side video. Like at this point, I think it deserves its own video or maybe its own TikTok. But this is so similar to Glaze Ecstasy. So Glaze Ecstasy should be part of this video, but like I said, I am here. My sam my other samples are there. So these both have raspberry. 
okay? Glaze Ecstasy and Juan Talenti both have raspberry. And to me, I get that the most. And I also get this lactonic, sweet, gourmand vibe from both of them. So that's just why I think they're so similar. You know, I can't say 100% right now, like, cross my heart let, that these are the same. And you know what I didn't love about Glaze Ecstasy is it had kind of a synthetic nature to it and this has the same thing honestly um but yeah people always talk about the banana in this fragrance saying it smells like banana runs banana laffy taffies it's not that bad like you might be thinking like you're gonna smell like i don't know like a banana smoothie or something like that you're not gonna smell ridiculous it's just kind of barely there i i can't even detect it really but i really like how well blended this is because there is a lot of notes but it's like i said very kind of indistinguishable the only reason i'm mentioning the raspberry is the most prominent is because this does remind me of glaze ecstasy and glaze ecstasy only has raspberry and apricot as for the fruits so that's why i think that they're similar um i don't think wantalenti nor glaze ecstasy is worth going through the hassle of getting them uh, I think the first time Aaron ordered Glazed Ecstasy, it was a seamless process. But this second time, they're having issues. They're saying, oh, we can't ship this because it has to go through the air. Which is kind of ridiculous because you shouldn't have let people from the U.S. place orders if that were the case. Um, with a specific shipping service. So there's like this one shipping service that won't ship perfumes via air. Because, you know, I guess they could be explosives or something. If If one of you guys knows the actual, like in-depth reason for that like will they actually explode i think my friend tamara told me that they'll kind of the perfume will like expand in the in the bottle and it might break um i don't know though because i thought people shipped like certain shipping services will do it so it's like people chose a shipping service and said i live in the u.s and they were able to complete their transaction and then their orders were being canceled because they were like oh after all we can't ship it to you guys because it has to go through the air and then it was just kind of a whole mess so i know that aaron's been having some difficulty with that ordering from italy and you know i just think if you can order a decant off of somebody fine and if you fall in love with it do your thing but I just don't want to say that these are so amazing that you have to do the most to get them because you just simply don't. Okay, last one from Erin is by 4160 Tuesdays, which is this niche house that makes mostly gourmands. They have a lot of other, not a lot, they have a few others that are just kind of like florals and not gourmand, but they have a lot of gourmands and they're unique, which I was excited about. Oddly enough, Crikey Coconut Caramel is kind of hard to get your hands on as well. So this isn't on Lucky Scent. They have a lot of 4160 Tuesday scents, but they don't have this one. And then, you know, other retailers, I don't know. This is just kind of a lesser known house. Like I said, Lucky Scent carries a lot of their scents, just not this one. And then crystalfragrance.com, which I've never purchased from, but I heard it's legit and great. They have Crikey Coconut Caramel. They offer samples and the full bottle. But I think I just decided to purchase directly from Aaron because... I wanted to okay so you guys this is one of the worst fragrances I've smelled in my recent memory swear to god so this fragrance you guys it has chocolate and coffee but I was not thinking this is going to be a primarily chocolate and coffee scent because it's called coconut caramel this is just the most bitter coffee the most bitter chocolate dark chocolate which dark chocolate is fine in perfumes and stuff, but I think there was a mishap in making this fragrance. And as soon as I smelled it, I was like, oh, maybe that's why it's not on Lucky Scent. Maybe it just wasn't selling. It's so bad. Like, trust me, you guys, don't even let the curiosity kill you. I feel bad because I know Erin likes this one. Obviously, she owns it, but wow, um, not what I expected at all. And as soon as I tried this, I was like, okay, great. And now I guess I shouldn't check out more of this house. Like, I don't know, I was scared. But someone told me on TikTok that, I don't know, I have like two people. I think one person said they agreed they had the same thoughts about coconut caramel. And then another person said to try their other chocolates because they're not as bitter. So I might, even though I saw some bad reviews about Over the Chocolate Shop saying that the chocolate was very dark. Um, 
So anyway, I, yeah, can't recommend this one in good faith because it wasn't what, I, I feel like it was falsely advertised and I don't like the undertone that's in this fragrance, but that did not stop me from trying another 4162 Tuesdays fragrance. So this one is called What I Did on My Holidays and this is a popular one, I think. And when I first saw the notes, I was like, ew, who would buy that? You know, it had the most weird notes that I did not think would go together. But trust me, you guys, this is something special. This is unique. I've never smelled anything like it. It's like, I don't know if it's full bottle worthy yet. I mean, I just got the sample today. Give me a break. I'm going to have to play with it a little bit. But this is so refreshing in the way that it smells and then also just in the way that it's so different from anything else I've ever smelled. So yes, um, I did hear this described as mint ice cream, which is why I decided to buy the sample because the notes had me scared. Um, and you know, there is lavender in here, which I don't know. I kind of want the lavender taken out, but it also adds to the aroma of the fragrance. So it's kind of soothing because of the mint and the lavender, but then it's creamy at the same time. I also get kind of a lime. Do you guys know how the Shamrock Shake is mint flavored? Like spearmint, I guess. In my mind, it's spearmint. But it kind of has a lime taste. Tell me you know what I'm talking about because some people don't know what I'm talking about when I say that. This kind of reminds me of like a Shamrock Shake with some lavender. Truly. Truly, it smells like that. And I, I, there is cotton candy in here. I guess it's making it sweeter, but to me, I just mainly get that ice cream. I guess there's a cotton candy, but it's not as sugary sweet as other cotton candies I've smelled. It doesn't dominate the fragrance. Those herbs still maintain their, their ground. Okay, so this is a cool one. I like this one. So um, if you're curious to try something different, mint ice cream, again, not chocolate chip ice cream, not mint chocolate chip, just like a minty lime, like a shamrock shake with some lavender, then check it out. I kind of skipped ahead, sorry about that. That sample was from Lucky Scent. We will resume the other Lucky Scent scents. But first I got this sample from eBay and I will try to put the link to the listing because, well, I mean, it's also like one of the only listings of this on eBay. It is by Theodoros Galopinis, who I believe is Greek. And this is called Coffee Addict. So if you're kind of really into niche perfumes or you really like coffee notes, you've probably already heard of this fragrance. It is regarded as like the best coffee fragrance on the market. And wow, you guys, if you want to smell like tiramisu, this is your one-stop shop. Like it smells like tiramisu. And I love that because I feel like if it was kind of like a caramel macchiato, it would be a little not boring, but it'd just be kind of like, whatever. But this is very, very well done. Like A++. They really ate that. Like, I don't know. It just really tastes, not taste, please. It really smells so edible. They nailed the coffee. They, and like I said, it's tiramisu. So it's sweet. It's sweet enough to wear. I almost sampled this other coffee fragrance, but then I heard that it was very bitter. You don't have to worry about bitter coffee. Again, it's nothing like coconut caramel. It's sweet tiramisu, and I know a lot of people love tiramisu, so if you do and you want to smell like it, check it out. It's also affordable, but you have to pay for international shipping and stuff, but I believe like if you lived in Greece or wherever they sell it, it would be like under $100, probably under 50 I think, which is crazy because I don't know. It's rare that you hear about, not rare, but I love when I can find an affordable niche fragrance. You know what I mean? So we're back to Lucky Scent. Let's talk about Veniglia from Mazzolari. So first they sent me a sample and I was like, whoa, this is very masculine. Yup, it's this one. I was like, hmm, I kind of liked how it smelled. And then I quickly realized there was no way in hell that this is Veniglia. So I contacted Lucky Scent and within the hour, they responded and said, we will ship you a new one. You know, it's been handled and they were gonna check the batch and make sure that the correct Veniglia was being put in the bottles. And I was like, wow, I love that. I feel like good customer service is very rare. And I don't know if they did next day shipping. I forgot to look, but I got it literally one to two days later. Um, which I feel like that's kind of, it should be the standard. Like you should ship me the correct thing because you gave me the wrong thing. 
But I thought for a second they might like play games with me or, you know, like think that I was lying. But I think they see that I'm a regular customer of theirs and that, you know, I literally didn't get the right thing. So, so I'm so mad about this, to be honest, because it's not vanilla caramel and orchid. It's cotton candy. When can we get that? When can we get that distinction made? I don't know. Because anyway. I'm going to be doing a dupes video, but there is an $18 dupe by Anthropology. if you know you know, that you can get for a fraction of the price. I don't understand why people are still buying this. Probably, okay, let me give you the benefit of the doubt. Utrumer's Vini, which is what I was talking about. Utrumer's Vini is slightly more alcoholic in the opening. Um, maybe I got a bad bottle. I don't know, okay? I already gave it to my friends, so. But... It smells like cotton candy vodka in the beginning, then it dries down to be the same thing as this. So they have the exact same dry down, maybe not the same performance, but okay. Like they smell the same in the dry down. So I would not bother with this. I don't know why this is hyped up. I don't know why people keep saying that this is a vanilla fragrance when it's a cotton candy. And I love cotton candy, let me just say, but I think there's a kitty cotton candy and an adult cotton candy. And I'm not shading anyone because I wear raspberry jam donut and all these childish scents. But I'm just saying, the cotton candy that's in um, Wonderland Peony by Floral Street is so sweet and delicious, but it's also just not kitty-like. This is just kind of kitty-like. It just smells like something I would give an eight-year-old which is crazy because this is so expensive. Okay, I, I feel bad because I hope I'm not offending anyone. Like I know people who can afford Mozzolari are probably like, how dare you, blah, blah, blah. I'm just keeping it real. Okay, so sorry about that, let's move on. Okay, let's talk about some Hildi Soliani fragrances. So first up is the O word. I don't know if I can say it on YouTube. Well, honestly, I don't even think YouTube cares about me, little old me, but this is an almond amaretto scent or something like that. I love almond scents. Like there's never going to be an almond scent. Well, that's a lie. There will rarely ever be an almond scent that I don't like. However, people kind of hyped this up to where I thought it would blow my mind and be so much better than my other almond scents. It does have more of an amaretto vibe than whipped almond by Mix Bar or my other almond perfumes. But it's just not that impressive. I, I know that it's kind of a singular note fragrance and it's not supposed to blow my mind. But I just, I wouldn't buy a full bottle. That's the bottom line. I would rather wear whipped almond at this point because I already have it and it's cheap and I know I can overspray it with no guilt. So anyway, next one is Crema di Latte by Hildi Soliani again. And I bought this because a lot of people said it smells like condensed milk or dulce de leche and I was curious and it really does you guys it really does however it's slightly waxy slightly synthetic I just have to say it I do because you know if it didn't have that I would probably jump at the opportunity to get a bottle but since it does smell a little artificial I just don't know if I can go to that extent just because some Bath and Body Works gourmands don't have a waxy synthetic undertone to them so why would i go out and buy this if it if it does you know what i mean it's slight it's not obnoxious but it's just holding me back so anyway it really does smell condensed milky kind of like dulce de leche but i'm leaning more towards like the condensed milk with some caramel so yeah anyway it's called crema de latte which i think people thought would mean it would be very kind of coffee-ish but it's not it's more of that caramelized dulce de leche so i like it i don't know if i'm completely sold and then we have shabad late de Vigny. i did hear the perfumed nest i forget her name here on youtube but i love her she's so bougie so fancy and she recommended this in a video and it's not bad it just reminds me a lot of escapade gourmand by maison mataha like a lot and I already said that that one was kind of underwhelming, so that's how I feel about this one as well. Okay, so I have two fragrances from Javoy Paris. The first one is Remember Me, 
And this was supposed to be, I don't know, like a chai tea or something like that. And I'm not obsessed with this. I saw a lot of people hyping it up. So I'm the odd one out, I guess. I don't like it, especially in the first spray. It kind of reminds me of Nishane's Ani right at the beginning. Uh, not quite as spicy, but almost. It's quite spicy. I forget the notes. Maybe there's cardamom or something. Anyway, this is not the tea fragrance of my dreams. I was kind of wanting something else. So yeah, I think it's supposed to be lactonic as well. And it does become slightly lactonic in the dry down, but I don't know. It's just, it's whatever. Okay, then we have Javoy Paris Fire at Will. So I heard Jade Alice Bod talking about this on TikTok. I love her. She's one of my favorite people on TikTok. And she said, if you like Kayali's Vanilla 28, you will like this one. And I agree. Um, I like it, but I also think you might have a preference. So for me, I prefer Kayali's Vanilla, but you might prefer this one. Um, my friend Vanessa was just talking to me about this one and I was saying, I'll give you my sample because she doesn't like Kaylee's Vanilla. And I told her, in my opinion, this is like a diet Kaylee Vanilla. It's lighter, softer. I don't know if it's the mimosa or what, but it just makes it that way. This also has brown sugar, just like Kaylee Vanilla. It's nice. Um... I just kind of draw the line with softness sometimes like I like a soft skin scent it just depends like to me cloud is a skin scent but you can still smell cloud you can bet your butt you still smell cloud but with this it's kind of gonna be one of those things that is like as you walk by or as you move okay we're pausing on lucky scent and we're going to the perfumed core I'm this video is so all over the place but you guys can google these samples and you can find them on the first page of google it's pretty easy but yes we're now onto the perfumed core i've ordered from them numerous times so i trust them first up is killian kissing so this is old this is from the my kind of love collection and i was just curious and i don't love this it's just a green vanilla so if you like a manifesto maybe try it out get a sample from the perfumed core even though it is discontinued so Maybe there's no reason to do that. I don't know if this is still available on Killian's site. Maybe it is. I just don't know. I just think Princess is better than this one. This is just a green, very green fragrance. There is some vanilla. So again, that's why it reminds me of Manifesto, but this also has milk. So maybe on the dry down, it'll be creamier. I'm going to have to do a wear test on this one. Obviously, a lot of these I just smelled today. Like 11 of them I already smelled today only. So I haven't gotten the full wear test. I can't really speak fully to longevity and dry downs. And obviously my nose is probably just overwhelmed by all of this, but I can tell you for sure, if you don't like green fragrances, you won't like this one. Then I have Casablanca by Brown Girl Jade. And so this is one of the only places I was able to find a sample of this, the Perfumed Court. And I was curious about this one because it has marshmallow. And I did hear Kristen fragrances talk about this in one of her reels forever ago and I've just always like it's always been on my four test section of Fragrantica and last night I was looking at the notes and it said incense cardamom saffron and I was like oh no what did I get myself into because I think I just kind of forgot about those notes thankfully this is not super spicy this is not incensey you know if you watch my solstice sense video you know I tried that one gourmand fragrance foxcroft fairgrounds and it had con candy cream soda all these sweet notes and then it had incense and it was just boom like it sabotaged the fragrance that's not the case here it's a nice soft slightly sweet marshmallow scent i really like it i'm very picky about marshmallow scents so this has my stamp of approval um i don't know if i'll get a full bottle because i feel like i'm already content with just having killian princess as like my favorite marshmallow scent but i was just curious and i wanted to know if it was good and to see if I could recommend it in future videos, and I do recommend it. Then from Kerosene, we have two fragrances. The first one is Sweetly Gnome, and this has cardamom as well, and a burnt match note. So I think I just kind of underestimated that since it has vanilla and caramel, and I was just thinking that it wouldn't be that strong. You guys, when they say burnt match, they really mean it. This is a smoky, fragrance um it also smells very middle eastern i was not expecting that 
And I don't think kerosene is a Middle Eastern house. So if you like smoky, like, like I said, a burnt match, cardamom, spice, like slightly spicy scent, you should check this out. I don't think that the gourmand notes are powerful. I don't think that they stand out in this scent. So for me, this is a skip. But if you like those types of scents, then check it out. Then, Unknown Pleasures. I knew about this for so long. Um, I think I sampled Lyra first, and then that kind of scarred me from trying other lemon, lemon gourmands. But this is so different from Lyra, and I think people compare this to Lyra a lot, and people say this has such a strong lemon note, and it, it there's a clear lemon in it. But this is very easy to wear, well-balanced. I don't think that the lemon, you know, is territorial. I don't think it takes over everything. And I heard Val Vaughn mention that in her video that, like, the lemon did pop out and, like, took center stage. But I just feel like, I don't know, I really get the tea, I really get the honey. I also get a milky quality to this that I could not shake. I kept smelling it and I was like, there is some milk to this Earl Grey tea. There is something lactonic and creamy to this. Um, and people often say lemon bars and they made me think that it was going to be so tart, but it's actually creamy to my nose. So yeah, I've heard other people say lemon meringue pie. I think that's more accurate than lemon bars. So... I like this, I do, but I think the honey is quite strong. I know that's something really weird to focus on, but I think the honey is kind of, I wish it was toned down a little bit, you know what I mean? I need to play with this for sure, but this was a pretty good performer. I mean, it did kind of disappear after six hours. I don't even smell it anymore. Actually, I do a little bit. It's a very unique fragrance. I, I don't get the comparisons to Lyra and every other lemon fragrance on the market. This is, this, I'm stuttering. This is its own thing. First up, we have Byron Parfums, the Chronic Rouge Extreme. You guys, this caught me by surprise. This is so good. So I need to give it a full wear test. I haven't done that, okay? So I feel really bad hyping it up, but it's just so good. So. It has accords of like aquatic, ozonic. I was like, when I first saw it, I said, I don't want anything to do with that fragrance. Then I heard people hyping it up and I looked at the notes and I said, where is the aquatic notes that people were talking about? Are you talking about the melon? I don't know. So it has raspberry, whipped cream, melon, pear. I, I can memorize this one because I have it in my head. Spicy notes, cinnamon. And the cinnamon is not gonna have you in a chokehold like Angel Share. But then again, I loved Angel Share in the beginning, then I proceeded to hate it. So let me update you guys in a future video. But it has that spice, you know, whether it's the spicy notes or the cinnamon that makes it unique. And then it does have that raspberry. It is kind of a red fruity fragrance, but with a little bit of spice, it's beautiful. And I can't name a fragrance that smells exactly like it. I will say, I feel like this is something Britney Spears could have came out with. I don't know why she didn't. Because it just smells like one of her perfumes in a good way. Like fruity, slightly spicy, floral. You know, just it's kind of a simple note composition. But it does smell expensive and it does smell beautiful and niche. So, I mean, it's so expensive though, you guys. Like, they're pushing it. They're doing way too much. But maybe one day, maybe one day I'll buy it. Then lastly, we have Jusette Parfums Accident à la Venie. So I heard great things about this one. When I posted my thing on Save by the Smell, I had like three or four people say, you need to try this one next because you haven't tried it yet and they loved it. I really like this one. When I first smelled it, I was like, yes! Now I'm kind of switching. I'm like going back and forth because like, does it smell like a vanilla trash bag or am I just being way too picky? You know what I mean? Because like vanilla trash bags smell good. They smell like vanilla. And I feel like that's kind of what this smells like sometimes. It really does, you guys. So this has Styrax, which I don't really know what that smells like, but I think it adds, I'm like putting the leftover on my neck. It adds an interesting quality to this. If it were just vanilla and sandalwood, I don't think it would smell like this. It's creamy. You know, is it perfect? No. Is it one of my favorite niche vanillas that I smelled? Yes. So I don't know if I've talked about Tohota on my YouTube channel, but 
I thought it was so overhyped and basic and boring when I first smelled it, but now it's one of my favorite niche vanillas. It doesn't have great sillage or projection or anything, but it smells good, you know? And it would be perfect for layering and stuff like that. So right now it's like Kaoli's technically niche. Kaoli, Tahota, and Accident Alavani are some of my favorite niche vanillas. And I'm just always going to be on the hunt for more. I heard I need to get my nose on Helwa by Awaz, which is kind of hard to get your hands on. So I'm going to have to buy a decaf of somebody. But yeah, the search is not over. Okay, but I do like this accident I love Vanille and I'll see how I feel once I finish the sample but I'm kind of itching for a full bottle of it if I'm honest and then as for Tohota I don't think I would ever pay $220 for 50 mil but I did order a sample of Coco Pink's imitation of Tohota so if it's good I'll just get Coco Pink's you know so anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Let me know what you thought of these fragrances down in the comments below. Don't forget to follow me on socials and I'll see you next time. Bye.